afternoon. Thank you to be here to listen to my talk. Also, uh, I have around 20 minutes to share with you some of the practical insights how Siklam uh, and Metro Markets work together to build a brand new uh, B2B marketplace and launched it. So I am Arvind. Uh, I am global head for the retail and consumer goods and also for digital commerce practice. Day-to-day, uh, -day I work with my clients across regions to create solutions. I started my career with, with Telstra in Australia and then with Cable and Wireless, uh, which became part of Vodafone, and then as the head of digital for Europe at Infosys, and later at, uh, as a managing consultant for uh, retail and consumer manufacturing for PE Consulting, and now at Siklam. So uh, a brief about where I'm coming from. So Siklam is a, a global digital solutions company for Fortune 500 and fast growing company. Uh, it was founded in 2002. We have 3,500 developers, software engineers, architects, designers, uh, uh, you can uh, scientists working on AI, machine learning, robotics, IoT. You can think of. And as a young uh, digital solution company, of course, we have a focus on agile and R&D areas. So. There are four key sections uh, I want to cover with you today. One was around what was Metro needs, their goals, and their objective was for building Metro marketplace. What was the delivery actually looked like on the ground for those period of time? What was the outcome, the results? And finally, what was the learning? What we and Metro learned together from this project? Okay. So how Metro Markets and Siklam became our digital partners. So uh, Metro had a vision to build a B2B marketplace for the hospitality industry. That means hotels, restaurants, and caterers. It was, they want to be a single stop shop for them. So whether they are starting a brand new business or they are running as a business operations. So the first thing Metro did was they set up a green field subsidiary called Metro Markets. And the reason was they don't want Metro Markets to be influenced by their legacy culture, their legacy systems and processes. And actually this turned out to be a good decision because they were able to move fast and with agility, right? Once Metro Markets was formed, they decided to build a, a custom based solution from the scratch for multiple reasons, of course. So one of the reasons was they wanted it to be adaptable to their business needs. They wanted the platform should be able to provide a personalized user experience. They wanted to ensure that they can change whenever they want and not at the mercy of large, expensive, off-the-shelf commercial providers depending on their roadmap. So essentially, they wanted to con take control of the entire technology space. Other thing they wanted to ensure was they want to stay focused on the functionality, which they can adapt and change with market needs to stay ahead of the competition, right? So, uh, so the next question for Metro Market was, how do we start? So they start looking for a digital partner who can help them scale and who can launch B2B marketplace in less than a year. So at this point, uh, Siklam and Metro Marketplace came together. So I have now told you the background, the context about the vision and the goal. Everything is great. Everyone is happy. So now the fun time starts. OK. So I want to be honest with you. Uh, this was not uh, a journey uh, where everything went perfectly. OK. Uh, we have issues, challenges, as you can think of from day one. Actually, uh, we were in the very bad place when we started, okay? So let me share with you what were the challenges we faced together as Metro Markets and Siklam, and how together as a team we solve those problems, right? So just remember these four areas. These were the four principles with both the organization agreed as we started doing project execution. 
that we must be product focus we must be delivery focus we must ensure that we use data to make decisions and lastly we must apply modern engineering approach okay so what does it mean uh, uh, in, in the practical scenario so we started collaboration in a very old traditional old fashioned way of working right gathering all the requirements okay digging out all the dependencies right and then we'll do the solution design architecture then we'll do the testing part then we we'll start development right so it was a very sequential approach a cause of multiple problems right so one of the problem was slow feedback from the business so let me give you an example what it means by the slow feedback right so we wanted to implement a vat change in the payment engine right so it's a simple thing right vat is a percentage of a uh, country based you know based on the price right it was taking ages i think it took around, almost around 4 weeks to implement a vat feature into payment systems right so we knew that we had to make certain changes now going forward right and we also knew what the solution may look like remember those four boxes so we knew what solution should be but before we before doing that in the first few weeks we went back to the team in both metro markets and seek them to gather feedback right so one of the feedback a common feedback from the team was that we are always in meetings we don't know when we are going to deliver the product right one of the developer asked a very important question that i am writing a code entire day how is metro market is going to make money right and the question from technical lead was that i am constantly fire fighting right uh, why can't the team solve their own problems right and of course we had the metro market ceo asking that i have a board to tell them are we on track or not what should i tell them right so these are the very fundamental problems and you can imagine in the first few weeks if that is the feeling in the team how confident they are to deliver the product in 9 months time it was a big challenge and let me tell you these are all were actually agile experts certified scrum masters certified product owners the issue was the mindset right so we made a switch so we made a deliberate switch to a more modern product based structure okay so what we did was we form a small short feature based teams the team were able to break down the user stories by themselves and then in parallel they started doing development work continuous integration testing and rolling out features right so now you have a team instead of working in a sequential manner we can throw the problem at them they can solve the problem of their own because now they can see the business value and they can continuously deliver to the production stage right so one of the learning from this was that autonomous teams owning the outcome is key to delivery at scale especially for large complex programs okay and second getting the right structure in place to support this was actually even harder So let me share with you what change happened practically on the ground, right? So we had a backlog, huge backlog. We have epics, okay? But the epics was not defined, summarized properly. That means each and every team member have to read all the user stories to understand what the scope is and what they have to do. The team and scrum master cannot take responsibility. They can't own it. they can't self organize and the product owners for metro markets they told us that they are continuously busy shuffling the backlogs all the time because they are the only one who know that what the consequence will be if they change anything on the schedule right so the left hand side shows the seller registration all they hold capability of the bt marketplace the right hand side shows the buyer's capability there are the two major core functionality on b2b marketplace right so what we found in the beginning was 
that we have a team who are working on an epic creating a registration capability for the sellers right and then we have another team who is creating a registration capability for the buyers so why duplication for the registration purpose and second what is the business value out of this so you are building registration in isolation the business can't see the value customers can't measure it what is the point and they can't do show the value because there are continuous dependencies throughout the cross functional teams so this was the change we made remember i mentioned about building a feature team so we moved from vertical linear model so now we have example of feature team which can add a product add a price to it on the seller side the buyers can search products or multiple products buyer can filter the price of the products in the ascending or descending order they can buy it and ship it so now that feature team can demonstrate the value throughout the journey that what they are working on they can measure also right so this was the final team structure after the changes is the so called spotify structure now we have a cross functional teams so the blue shows the key roles from the client metro market side and the amber shows the team and the responsibility from siklam side so this actually help addressing multiple problems so for example having mixed teams that means we never had a separate siklam team we never had a separate metro market teams we always has mixed teams okay and it help address issues starting from cultural barriers right so there is no me versus you anymore because they are part of one single team secondly every month metro market team will spend some time with siklam team in kiev and siklam team from kiev side we travel to germany in dusseldorf and spend time with them so that was actually a genuine collaboration working toward one single goal so out of 170 people 120 people were from siklam side we have 15 teams nine based in kiev and six based in dusseldorf and then of course we have chapter leads uh, for uh, devops ci cd engineering pipeline chapter leads for architecture chapter leads for q automation who are ensuring that they are following consistent practice and the guidelines across the teams okay so i have covered the product focus and delivery focus is approach the third part was data so we found that the teams were organizing the backlog and give, giving us estimations based on their subjective view that okay this is what i understand i have so much of experience in my team this is what we, we this is how many sprint cycle we will take to deliver a feature then of course it was always deba debatable there was an argument and of course potential failures so what we decided was we have now data over the last 2 3 months time why don't we use those data to do forecasting right so we implemented this tool actionable agile okay so now there are no debates around subjective views it is all data driven so what it means this is an example of a sprint team communicating to the business that i can deliver a task or activity with 50% probability by 8th of july i can finish that task with 85% probability with by 13th of july but i am 95% confident to deliver the same task by 17th of july so there is no more weekly basis excel sheets or charts in a reactive manner this information for all the teams were made available through large display screens across different cities different floors in a very transparent transparent manner okay so from business point of view they were able to see that the collaboration is very genuine they are able to predict the outcome till the end okay so uh, please don't get uh, you know worry about the the density or the complexity of the visual and the text i'll just summarize you 
the key message here. So this was the fourth task, the applying modern engineering approach. So uh, one of the things which we did here was, remember I mentioned you it was taking four to six weeks time, taking from code to production, which was absolutely unacceptable, right? So we reviewed the entire DevOps, CSA engineering tools, their configuration and the process, right? And one important thing we did before making fundamental change in the team and the, and the process was, <coughs> we, <coughs> we found that uh, there were areas like contracts, for example, right? <coughs> Example of VAT contract. So we, what we did was, we said the team who are going to develop the, the VAT capability, for example, in the very beginning, they will articulate the contract. That means they are using APIs. They are going to consume the APIs for those contracts. They will write the test that what the test should look like, what the end result should look like for those contracts. That development team gave those written tests to the team who are writing the APIs, right? So now the API team knows what they should develop to meet the benchmark, right? So that was the kind of changes we made. This entire blue zone was fully automated completely in the cycle. And we started making changes gradually. It's not about like sudden change. This gradual change was able, we were able to see. We saw in the first few weeks, it shrunk from four to six weeks time, the code to production to one week. Then it shifted from one week to one day. And now we are operating at 40 minutes, right? So when we're talking about these metrics, for example, weeks or days or hours or minutes, actually we were following a industry benchmark. As some of you may know, it's called DevOps research and assessment industry framework. So we started at, at the lowest, most bottom of the industry benchmark, taking four to five weeks time. We made gradual changes. We improved by a week. And now Metro market is operating at elite level. And I can tell you that even though we have 40 minutes, go to production uh, cycle time, now they are focusing on under 30 minutes cycle time. So the final results, the outcome, right? It was launched on 2nd September, a week in advance, okay? The actual picture of the first product order on B2 Marketplace and delivered online to the customer. It was a seamless, incident-free. Actually, uh, three days before the deadline, 2nd September, Metro Markets and Ciclum team were already planning for the next release. So you can imagine what was happening in the first few weeks, taking cycle time, four to six weeks time, people were unsure, they were unhappy, they were not so confident. To the shift, where three days before the launch, they were absolutely confident and then planning for the next phase. And of course, the CEO of Marketplace, uh, uh, Metro Marketplace, Philip Bloom was absolutely ecstatic. He was very happy. And together as two teams, you know, from both Metro Markets and Siklum, we were able to address multiple challenges. One was able to launch a feature within one to 10 days time, right? Team were able to own the problems and driving solution themselves. And now Metro Markets as an organization, they have a delivery engine who are delivering at a pace, right? So what are the key takeaways from this partnership other than those four areas of product focus, delivery focus, data-driven education, and modern engineering uh, approach. The fours are, of course, at times, we're launching a brand new business. A digital partnership can really help you to accelerate and set the pace. Set, secondly, from technical point of view, having a structure backlog, having a mixed teams, not separate teams, having a mixed teams around end-to-end -end features, really help create a business value. Developers should be able to see the value what they're working towards. Third, 
large complex projects should always be data driven, not on the basis of subjective view of individual team members. It's a recipe for disaster. And lastly, do apply monitoring DevOps CICD structure in place. In this case, we had a separate six member team on DevOps CICD side who were making gradual changes working with the teams and that really helped. Okay. So, uh, before I take questions from your side, uh, I am with my colleague Ralph and Yvonne at Expo Ground at Send 3.4. If you want to discuss things more in detail on engineering side, DevOps side, please do catch hold of me. Now, any questions? Thank you. Arvind, uh, on one of the slides, there was one mention of a problem where the sellers were asking, when can I go to market? Uh, other than that, you didn't mention any obstacles uh, or troubles with the sellers on the marketplace. Can you tell me more about what obstacles or problems you had from the seller side uh, and how you approached the problem and solved them? Yeah, so there were multiple issues from seller side, of course. Uh, because they were working in isolation, the business was not able to see uh, what the complete cycle looks like from adding a product all the way to make the product visible, for example. Uh, we have a partner who are focusing on warehouse side, right? So when you, from the seller side, when you put a product on the system, right, and publish the price, right, you're not able, they were not able to see clearly that what is the rate of customer flow? How many customers are landing on the page, looking on the sites? How many are dropping out? How many customers are actually buying the products? and moving forward. Because the teams were focusing on vertical feature only, which has no business value, okay? They were not able to show the feature, for example, basic things like ratings, for example, right? Because again, they were working in, in isolation. All that got changed when we, when we start making cross-function based teams, right? So for example, I mentioned to you that they had the team now starting with adding a seller side, adding a product, adding a price, and seller able to see. So those things were not at all visible to tell us sellers that what actually happening to my product, where people are, how many people are buying my products, where actually they are dropping out. It started evolving on a later stage. You good? Okay, thank you so much guys, bye-bye.